Busch Gardens Williamsburg is already home to a thrilling collection of roller coasters, but its most recent addition is something really rather special, the fastest multi-launch roller coaster in the world, known simply as Pantheon. Boasting a top speed even higher than Taran, Velocicoaster and Maverick, Pantheon at Busch Gardens Williamsburg was one of my most anticipated rides to experience, but I wasn't sure if it could live up to the hype. This is the largest roller coaster to be added to the park since Griffin opened about 15 years ago, so the ride really needs to make an impact. Could it become the best ride at the park? What would it be like to experience its unique swing launch? And how does it compare to other multi launch roller coasters around the world? Let's find out. I'm Roller Coaster David, and this is my review of Pantheon at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. Pantheon starts with a gentle downhill slope as it exits the station into a left turn. This leads into a slow and gentle S-curve before you hit the launch track and you're suddenly propelled to 36 miles per hour. You're launched straight into a 0G winder inversion which pulls out into a right turn that leads into two back-to-back off-axis airtime hills, first to the right and then one to the left before you hit a switch track and you're onto the main launch section. The second launch boosts you up to 50 miles per hour as you sail up half of the first top hat element before you free fall backwards and into the third launch, this time catapulting you backwards at 61 miles per hour and up into a huge spike. After a few moments of weightlessness, you drop into the final launch, this time reaching 67 miles per hour before you pull up and over the top hat and dive down a 95 degree beyond vertical drop on the other side. At the bottom you reach the ride's top speed as you turn to the right and then pull up and twist into a massive outward banked airtime hill. Next is a small hump before you twist to the right and invert into a zero g stall. After experiencing weightlessness, you twist downwards to the left into a high speed chicane before the ride ends with another off axis airtime hill and comes to a gentle stop on the brake run. As you can see it's a fairly substantial layout with some unique thrills. There's quite a lot to unpack here though so let's look at some of my favourite sections in a bit more detail. I do quite like the start of the ride as it's rather well paced. The first launch may not reach a very high speed, but it still has a reasonable kick to it and makes for a fun start to the ride as it sends you straight into an inversion. This actually reminded me of Helix at Liseberg as the corkscrewing element at the start lets you know exactly the sort of ride you've let yourself in for. There's a mild positive G at the turnaround at the bottom, but unfortunately the two trick hills are a bit disappointing as they only give some relatively minor airtime and generally feel a bit weak and perhaps a bit of a missed opportunity. The ride is only just getting started here though, so it hasn't really gained enough energy to pull off anything too insane. The unique swing launch is all about energy however, and it feels significantly different to other swing launch rides. Most of these tend to have their launches go on flat, straight track, but Pantheon has a small but powerful airtime hill inserted into its launch. Pulsar does something kind of similar, but the effect is much more intense on Pantheon. The launch is actually split between two sets of LSMs with a small gap in between, so it kind of comes in two waves. The first part of the forward launch is kind of weak, but when you hit that second part the intensity really starts to ramp up. It's the backwards launch though that is probably the real highlight of the ride though. The backwards launch is simply insane. You really feel it as you free fall backwards from the top part and the LSMs kick in and you're absolutely yeeted backwards at an incredible speed. As you fly over the airtime hill, you're thrown right out of your seat with some extreme ejector air. The second part of the reverse launch has another kick to it, and there's a small bump in the track that again delivers a pop of ejector air. You can kind of get an idea of the forces involved from when I tried to film a reverse POV, but struggled to keep the camera steady. The reverse spike is another awesome highlight of the ride, particularly if you're in the back row. As soon as you hit the vertical, you become weightless all the way up and all the way down, similar to what you experience on Superman at Six Flies Magic Mountain. This also gives a great view looking straight down before you plummet back down to earth and into the final launch section, where again there's some pretty extreme ejector air over the hills in the track. The top part here is a little disappointing though, as you slow right down at the top, so unfortunately you don't get sustained air like you get on other launch coasters. Instead you get some brief air and a lovely view looking out over the rest of the park. The drop that follows though is pretty amazing. I didn't realise it at first and I'd somehow managed to miss it in the ride's marketing, but this is actually a beyond vertical 95 degree drop, and as you fall you get some fantastic air as you're lifted up out of your seat. 
The high speed turn at the bottom also mixes up the forces with some decent positives and the following huge sideways outer bank dare time hill has some lovely sustained floater air all the way around. The zero g stall is good but just like Velocicoaster it kind of feels a little off and doesn't quite manage to feel as good as on RMC versions of the element. I think Pantheon's one is a little better than Velocicoaster's as there doesn't seem to be quite the same left to right shake you get on Universal's flagship coaster and it's not an unpleasant element by any means but it's just not as good as the zero g stalls you can get on RMC coasters. The chicane near the end of the ride helps to keep the ride feeling fast and well paced and the final sideways airtime hill gives another fun element to experience before you hit the brakes. It may seem like I've made a few criticisms of the ride but honestly when you take it as a whole the ride is great fun. The reverse spike and the launches are major highlights and the overall pacing and variety of forces is spot on with each element of the track offering something decent. Not everyone seems to agree however so here's a counterpoint from my friend Mark. Mark, what do you think of Pantheon? It goes way too slow, man. Other than the backwards launch, it's like one of the tamest, slowest intimates. So I went in like, I was going in thinking that Busch Gardens Williamsburg would get a coaster that could compete with I-305 at King's Dominion, like a very intense ride. They kind of have a Alpengeist right now, so they kind of, that's like their closest intense ride. And then I went in and I was very much let down. It was kind of like Hagrid's mixed with Velocicoaster, but kind of gentle and slow. Like, And the outward bank didn't really do a lot. The backward speed hill is nuts. It's like a Skyrush moment. I agree, it's nuts. but And the spike is great. But yeah, it needs to be more intense. Like Intamin gave it that boost mode over the top hat, and we will have a set ride, I think. Of course, Mark is wrong. I don't think Pantheon is too slow at all, the launches have a good kick and reach a decent speed and not every element has to offer an extreme ejector air to be enjoyable, sometimes floater is fun and variety is the spice of life. He does raise an interesting point however. The ride like other Intamin launch coasters does seem to have a boost mode that it can operate in. During my visit to Busch Gardens there was a pass holder ERT event for the ride that was sadly cancelled due to high winds but they were able to boost the train around the circuit in these high winds using a faster launch option. It's kind of hard to see but you'll definitely notice a difference in how fast the train crests the top hat. I'd love to experience the ride running in this mode but perhaps some of the ejector sections of the launch track and the beyond vertical drop could be a bit too extreme if that was the case. The top hat would be so much sweeter though if you could get airtime all the way over the top of it. Another thing that could be improved about Pantheon is its theming which in general does feel a bit underwhelming and I get the feeling budget cuts might have forced it to be scaled back. The station is functional but how much more epic would it have been if it was built as a Roman temple or villa with columns and artwork inside? Also the general landscaping of the ride is a bit barren and lacking in detail. Whilst terrain use is good with the dive down to the river being a highlight, the rest of the ride is mostly just over a green field. This is supposed to be the Garden of the Gods and if that's the case they could really do with hiring a better gardener. I remember seeing a leaked concept video of the ride before it had been built that included much more rock work, trees, a bridge and a plaza with a fountain as part of the ride theming and adding these could have given the ride a much stronger identity and look a lot more impressive visually. Pantheon does have a bit of a story to its theming though with sections of the track themed to five Roman gods which is explained by signs along the queue line. The first section of the ride is attributed to Minerva, the goddess of wisdom and war, who will guide you through this extreme journey. The main launch section is dedicated to Mercury, the messenger of the gods, which I guess makes sense with it running back and forth between them. The reverse spike represents Neptune, and I think it's supposed to represent his trident, however this could be made a lot more apparent if the track could have actually had an actual trident on top of it, and could have made for an interesting visual element. The top part is dedicated to Jupiter, the king of the gods, which I guess makes sense as it's a high point of the ride. The pull out from the drop and the off axis airtime hill is dedicated to Pluto and meant to represent the escape from the underworld, which I suppose again makes sense as it starts at the lower section of the ride. The final section of the track, encompassing the zero-g stall, chicane and off axis airtime hill, is strangely godless however, with nothing attributed to it. This does seem a bit odd as it's not as if there's a shortage of Roman gods that they could have dedicated a bit of track to, and Pantheon after all is a collection of gods, not just five. One positive of the ride is that operations were pretty good during my visit. 
When Pantheon was running two trains, they rarely stacked, which is important as each train only holds 20 riders, so this isn't exactly a mega capacity ride, especially when you consider some of the B&M coasters at the park can run up to three trains, with each one holding 36 people. Rewridability is another big strong point for Pantheon. The restraints are comfortable and the variety of forces mean no part of your legs are being constantly squashed or bruised, so it's a ride you can happily marathon for a good part of the day. I'd also like to say that the switch track technology used in the ride is quite impressive. I can only imagine how much rigorous testing and fail-safes must be involved to ensure that the train never ends up on the wrong section of track. Intamin have used switch tracks before of course, but this implementation is just so smooth as there's no stopping of the train and the track switches behind it so quickly. So how does Pantheon compare to other similar coasters? Well to me it seems like the two best coasters to compare it to aren't open yet. These are namely Tutatis at Park Asterix and Gotham City Escape at Parque Warner Madrid, which are both scheduled to open later this year. There are a few other rides worth comparing though, and chief amongst those is Velocicoaster at Islands of Adventure. As another brand new Intamin launch coaster, I've seen quite a few comparisons to Pantheon, but I actually find these coasters quite tricky to compare. In fact, I think you can only really compare the second half of Velocicoaster to Pantheon, as these parts of the ride are made up of large, drawn out elements. The first half of Velocicoaster is a mix of tight twisting, intertwined elements, and because it, as a whole, has another half to it, overall I prefer Velocicoaster, but if you just put the second half of Velocicoaster against the whole of Pantheon, I'd probably put Pantheon first. Taran is another modern Intamin multi-launch coaster that some would find comparable, but to me it's a very different beast. Taran is all about twisting in and out of the amazing scenery as you tear around the track low to the ground at high speed, and its second launch particularly at night is one of the greatest moments on any coaster. But Pantheon has such a different layout, again with much more drawn out elements, without the rapid changes of direction. They're almost too different to compare, but if you forced me to pick I'd probably have to go for Taran. The best Mac ride to compare Pantheon to is probably Operation Enterprise at Movie Park Germany. Its twisted reverse spike that forms part of its swing launch is a really fun element, however the rest of the ride just isn't anywhere near on the same scale as Pantheon, and to me the Intamin ride easily beats it. It would be interesting to compare it to Steel Taipan though, but I'm yet to make it out to Australia to experience that one. Gerstlauer also have a couple of swing launch coasters, such as Fury at Bobby Janland and Gold Rush at Slagharen, but again these just aren't anywhere near on the same scale as Pantheon, and lack the wow factor and intensity it brings. Premier Rides may have started the swing launch craze with their mass produced Skyrocket 2 coasters, and Icebreaker, one of their more recent rides, has a fun multi launch track with some interesting airtime bumps in it. It's almost like a scaled down version of Pantheon, and it's a fun, albeit much less extreme ride. It lacks Pantheon's wow factor though, and it has horrible restraints with the discomfort collar that's unnecessary that you're forced to wear. Pantheon therefore is a far superior ride as a result of this. You could maybe argue though that the original swing launch came from Schwarzkopf, with rides like the Bullet, which has been an attraction at several parks around the world, but is currently located in Mexico. In probably every objective way, Pantheon is a better ride, but I'm still a sucker for a classic Schwarzkopf bit of intensity, which makes the classic ride something really rather special. So it should be clear at this point that Pantheon is a pretty great ride with a satisfying layout, good level of intensity and solid variety of elements. It compares favourably against a lot of coasters, and indeed I would consider it a top tier coaster, which I think is very important for the park. In recent times, Busch Gardens Williamsburg hasn't had a proper destination coaster that I'd consider truly great, and now it does. Don't get me wrong, as a decent selection of good coasters, Apollo's Chariot, Griffin and Alpengeist are all fun B&Ms, each a solid 7 or 8 out of 10 sort of coaster, but these ride styles are quite common at other parks, and whilst they're good rides, they aren't outstanding and better examples of them exist. Likewise, Invader and Verbolton are great family rides, but they lack the major thrill factor for seasoned enthusiasts. You can maybe argue that the Loch Ness Monster is iconic enough that it's a proper headliner, and whilst it was revolutionary when it opened, nowadays it's sadly overshadowed and doesn't hold much appeal to anyone other than those who love vintage rides. As such, Pantheon is a fantastic addition to the park that gives them a proper headline ride to be proud about. 
Pantheon's unlike anything else at Bush Gardens or its competing parks, so hopefully it'll prove a huge success in bringing more people to the park. So that's my review of Pantheon wrapped up. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video, and if you have, I'm sure you know what to do. I've been Rollercoaster David, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you again in another video very soon.